I was trained as a paleontologist, and yet the animals I study, ancient nautiloids, were to me but impressions in rock, and I really needed to see the living animal. And then I heard that there was one place on Earth where not only could you trap them, but if you were a diver and you were willing to dive at night outside the reef, you could see them. In the South Pacific, near the island of New Caledonia, an enormous coral reef has been growing steadily for millennia. The reef drops off suddenly here, descending more than a thousand feet. These tropical waters teem with animals, and living alongside them is an amazing survivor. One of a few remaining nautiloids, a line of shelled mollusks that managed to rise up from the sea floor. Led by paleontologist Peter Ward, a team of scientists has come to New Caledonia in search of the chambered nautilus. To do so, the scientists go fishing, sending baited traps a thousand feet down the reef wall. Nautilus is an indication of an animal that has survived a world that has gotten more and more dangerous. You can see any nautilus shell has numerous breaks upon it. It's clear there's a very dangerous place to live, and yet this particular design, this body plan of the nautilus has gone through. It's really survived the millennia. Not many of his brethren did. But can they find such an elusive creature? At the end of the line they are hauling up, a nautilus will appear. They hope. When you start seeing the traps coming up, you peer over the side and try to see it. Can I see? You know, there ain't any in there. One, two, three, and you see a little brown, a little white. Yeah. Yes, there we go. I thought, hey, we got Nautilus. I thought, two. We had a deep water shark. Like living fossils, two Nautilus are in the first trap. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, my old friends. Look at it. The strong Nautilus shell keeps the buoyant gas within at constant pressure, unlike the deep water fish that came up with them. All right, here's the Nautilus difference between the Nautilus coming up and that fish. See that fish with the swim bladder out? That has come up so quickly that he didn't have time to pressurize, and so his, his guts have blown right out of his mouth. These Nautilus have come up from 1,000 feet. They're wonderful. They don't care. What a beautiful design difference. Examining the Nautilus, we can see how evolution transformed a mere bottom feeder into a buoyant battleship. What makes Nautilus unique among the living mollusks today is that the shell is not a simple interior tube, but it is cut into a series of partitions. People began x-raying the animals, and early on it became apparent that not only is there air in the chambers, but there's water too. New chambers are sealed off with seawater still inside them. In order to stay buoyant as it grows, the Nautilus must remove this seawater from its shell. 500 million years ago, a buoyant shell enabled the nautiloids to grow in size and dominate the seas. So let's imagine now we're back right where the first nautiloids appear. The biggest, most complex, most common animals in the oceans are trilobites, and the majority of these are on the bottom. So now we evolve a large shelled predator that can swim like a fish. And let's imagine what airplanes did to warfare, and the Nautilus was the first armed airplane that could swoop down, grab its prey, fly off. Can you imagine the havoc on these sea bottoms? Oh my gosh, what's that? Crash! And your food. The last remaining descendants of these ancient warriors, equipped with many of the same weapons, still exist. Today, they have become reclusive creatures, dwelling in the ocean depths. To see a Nautilus swimming in the wild, Peter Ward must dive at night 
when they rise to the reef under cover of darkness. As soon as we turn our lights on, we have a sense of the bottom beneath us, but only as a spot. All else is dark around you, but that spotlight is illuminating fish in the midwater, you've got lots of shrimp, and at night the plankton in the coral reefs rises. So it's like diving through this incredible bestiary of tiny animals. That cliff, when you go over the edge, you just see blackness. And you shine your light down there, well, there's no bottom down there. Well, it's down there, but it could be a 1,000 feet down. So you're looking really over the edge. And the Nautilus are living down there. So the extraordinary thing is to sit on the edge of that cliff at 100 feet, let's say, and you see these very faint white things coming up to you from the deep. The most extraordinary feeling. It's like being back in the ancient ocean where most of the animals swimming around were like the nautilus back when they were the rule. And to finally see them swimming about, and I just had this sense that this is not some ancient, slow, stupid creature. This is a survivor. It's a survivor for a good reason. You don't last 500 million years if you're poorly adapted. <laughs> <laughs> 